You know why you don't like billing clients hourly, but do you know how to reframe it so that your clients know it's not in their best interest either? I'm gonna share five ways to help you do that right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Ray Green, former executive turned nomad entrepreneur, and you already know why you don't like billing clients hourly, right? Put you in that weird spot between not quite a business owner because the business relies on me being on the clock in order to make money, but you're also not an employee because you don't get any PTO and you can't take a vacation because you've got to be on the clock to make some money. It's an awkward spot in between and you want to break that time for money trap, but you've got clients or prospects that insist on your time and trading time for money in order to become a client. I'm gonna share five ways that you can reframe that conversation to help them not just see that it's not in your best interest, but to help them see it's not in their best interest. When you buy people's time, you're gonna always get what you paid for as a client, but you're not always gonna get what you want. Your clients want something. They want some result, some transformation, some outcome as a result of the time that you put in. Time is just the means to the end. And what this does is help them focus on the end and what it is that they really want. I can't tell you how many times I have paid service providers, I have paid consultants, I have paid advisors, and I've spent a lot of money, weeks, months, even years later, looked and said, hey, what did I actually get? And you know what I got? Got a bunch of time, but I didn't get the result I was really looking for. So if you remind your clients, hey, if I sell you my time, you're going to always get what you what you paid for. But what do you really want? Right. I want to refocus my prospects and my clients into a conversation that helps them think through. You're right. What is that that I want? What is it I want that time to produce? And that's really more important than the amount of time. Time's just the only way that they have to hold you accountable. If they're not really clear on the result that they want, or they're not clear on how you're going to achieve it, or they're not clear on how to measure progress and know if you're on track or not on track, they're gonna buy time because that they can see, right? Like they can see that on a time card and that's the only way they have to hold you accountable. But when you refocus the conversation to the outcome and the transformation that they really want, it puts you in a better position to get alignment between the two. Now, the second way to reframe this is something like if the lawn company that you hire to take care of your grass or take care of your guard charged you by the hour, how would that change your relationship that you had with that service provider? You'd probably be sitting there thinking, hey, do they do they really need a break right now? Is this, is it like, why are they talking so much? Like, can't we, can't we speed this up? Why are they using that tool instead of that tool? Can't we get a third person in here? right? Can't we get somebody in here to get this done quicker? It changes the dynamic of how you manage your service providers, right? And it actually shifts the accountability back to you to help oversee that, right? Like you'd be thinking, hey, they're kind of moving slow as shit out here. Like you would be thinking about how they're doing the job instead of the job. When you instead charge by the outcome, you're concerned with the how a lot less than the what it actually produces, and that's what you want from this conversation. So having them think through how they pay other service providers and how it's going to mean more work and them having to micromanage things and them having to look at time clocks and all of that shit, they don't want that really either. They just want the outcome. So that's another way to do it. The third way to reframe this is, you know, I will make you a lot more money and I will get you better results on my bike ride than I will sitting in front of a Zoom call, right? And this works especially well if you're selling expertise, consulting, advising, like it obviously works there because you're not being paid for the time, you're being paid for your experience, you're being paid for your expertise, you're being paid for the brain power that you're bringing to help solve their problem or help take advantage of some opportunity that they want to leverage. And this is absolutely true for me. Right. When I'm doing consulting, I will have some really lucrative ideas come to me when I'm out on my bike ride. Well, what am I going to do? Start the clock. How's that going to look on a timesheet? You know, when I submit it, I'm bike ride, you know, for, for 90 minutes. When you're selling expertise, experience, knowledge, it obviously works, but it actually works really well when you're selling fulfillment of services. So think about it like this. If I hired a high end copywriter to write the copy for a really important landing page for my business. That copywriter is gonna to wanna to think through things. That copywriter is gonna want some time to stare out the window and generate some ideas and be strategic. And you know what? When I'm paying a premium service provider, I expect them to use their brain, not just the fulfillment side of it. I expect them to use their brain. Shifting this and reframing it to highlight the importance of using this as well as the time that it might be on a Zoom call, as well as the time doing copy, as well as the time doing the graphics or whatever it is your service does is part of that. But the other part of the equation is the knowledge that goes into it. And like I've said, I've had some really, really lucrative ideas for my clients when I'm walking, when I'm out for a bike and I'm not gonna start punching a clock 
to go for my walks. Fourth way to reframe this is to ask them, have you ever been involved in any kind of legal matter, right? Like of a, a lawsuit, um, you know, but divorce, something like that. Isn't it strange how things get messier, take longer and get way more expensive anytime you get lawyers involved? And the reason is lawyers are billing hourly. Like one of my clients is actually a sales trainer for a lot of law firms. And he's had law firms tell him, hey, you know what? We're actually incentivized to be inefficient because they're billing hourly, right? Like you have scenarios where lawyers on two sides of the deal actually win and the clients don't. And that's because it highlights an underlying misalignment that comes from billing hourly. Billing hourly shifts the focus from getting the outcome that you want to the amount of work that I'm putting in. And that's why lawyers, no matter what, always win, even when their clients don't. Do you, Mr. or Mrs. Client, want to be in a scenario like that? I don't, I don't. I want to be in a position where we are aligned and that when you win, I win. And not creating an incentive to be inefficient. Not that I would, and it creates an incentive to get you slower results for it to take longer. And most of the people I work with want results faster. So when you get into that and you reframe it, you actually expose the underlying problem with hourly, which is the complete misalignment because it's not focused on results. All right, and the fifth way that you can reframe hourly billing is something to the effect of, you know what? People tend to charge you time when they don't know how to solve your problem. When they don't have a solution to a problem, they're gonna charge you for time because they gotta go figure some stuff out. Now this works especially well if you have a productized service, right? So when I was doing a lot of consulting, I had what I called the 360 sales audit. And what I would do if I was competing against other consultants in the space is I would, I would highlight the fact that, hey, I know how to solve your problem. In fact, I've solved your problem so many times that I've got a process to do exactly that. And I know how long it's gonna take me. I know how long it's gonna take me to identify the problem and build the solution and the roadmap to get you where you wanna go. And you're basically, you're going into the unknown, like the abyss of an hourly consultant if you don't have some some guidelines and some boundaries around it, they don't know how long it's going to take them to figure out the problem, let alone solve the problem. And you're going to be paying for the whole thing. Hourly is the absence of clarity. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Like, am I getting into a hundred hour job or a thousand hour job, a hundred thousand hour job? I have no idea. And who wants that level of uncertainty when it comes to business? So if you have a productized service and you've priced it the right way, meaning there's a fixed pricing mechanism that's associated with it, something to the effect of number of users, number of stations, amount of revenue, something like that, something that has a clear pricing mechanism, then you can actually create a wedge between you and competitors by demonstrating that your productized service is the result of superior knowledge, superior expertise, and you're going to provide more clarity around the service that you're providing, whereas these other hourly consultants don't know what they're getting into. You don't know how much you're going to pay. That doesn't sound like alignment either. So those are five ways that I've used to reframe the hourly billing conversation with clients. I would love to know what your experience is. What's been your experience in trying to transition from the hourly billing to retainer models or results-based or solution-based pricing? Go ahead, drop a comment below. I'd love to see what you think. And if I have some feedback, go ahead and comment. And if you found this video helpful, you may like some of my videos on productizing services here.